My name is Robert Porch, and I'm the director of the Ballroom Dance Conservatory here at OSHA. It is a pleasure to have you all with us here today with Orange County School of the Arts. Today's event is part of our fifth annual Master Artist Series. This series brings acclaimed artists and industry professionals to OSHA to work with our talented students, building their skills and providing inspiration and guidance for their futures. This year, we have an impressive list of visiting guest artists, including Tony Award winning actress, Stephanie J. Block, trailblazing ballerina, Misty Copeland, and Academy Award winning screenwriter, Kevin Wilmot. We're deeply grateful to our sponsors for supporting OSHA and helping to provide our students with unparalleled opportunities like these for helping make today's experience possible. Today, we are excited to introduce world-renowned dancer, actress, and TV personality, Anna Trubinskaya, deemed a favorite not only in the world of dance, but also in her nine season run with Dancing with, dancing with the Stars. 11. Oh, 11, 11, wow. Anna Trubinskaya has an impressive list of achievements. She was the US Rising Star Latin Champion and the Vice Champion in the Blackpool Rising Star Latin Championships. She's been on tour with Ballroom with a Twist, Forever Tango, and Dance to the Movies. On TV, Anna has appeared in shows such as Shark Tank, Hell's Kitchen, ESPN's Mike and Mike, as well as HBO's The Newsroom. And her TV and online hosting credits go on and on. Okay. I think we're good. No, well, today, let me tell them what's going to happen today. There's more. Okay. There's more. Today, during our first hour with her, Anna will be teaching a master class to all three levels of the OSHA Ballroom Dance Conservatory, as well as conservatory dancers from our sister school, California School of the Arts, San Gabriel Valley. And then students will have a Q&A with Anna during our interview um, session from three to four. We're looking forward to today's program. And we hope you enjoy. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Miss Anna Turbanskaya. Hey. And by the way, I came prepared, even though it's silly. Happy Halloween. <laughs> I know Halloween is very different this year. But anyway, Robert, oh my gosh, I'm blushing under all that layers of makeup. <laughs> with all this stuff that you, I see some familiar faces that I want to acknowledge. I see Brianna. Hi, I see Stuart. Kids, I'm sure I've seen you dance and perform at competitions and during your formation team. So, but especially girls, you look different with that makeup. So I'm just going to say hi to all. I'm very excited to be here. Um, who else is here that I know? Okay, that just says a lot. There's a lot of people. This is exciting. This is very exciting. Okay. So uh, Robert asked me to, I'm going to go straight to the business because with all the introductions and everything, I want to make sure you guys have the, the most out of today's. And like Robert mentioned, the Q&A will be after. So if you have any questions, just keep them in mind. If you want to write them down on a post-it or on your phone, then you probably much more savvy like that than me oh hi michael watkins good to see you too like i said familiar faces um so we're gonna go straight to it and when robert asked what do you want to teach uh, my general comment with osha is you guys is footwork so i would like to address the footwork in today's workshop but we're going to do it in two stages first i'm going to show you the prep for the footwork and then we're actually going to implement some of the stuff in the routine that i'm going to teach you and it's a solo routine so i hope you guys um came with your shoes i hope you have space in your living room or garage or wherever that you're dancing uh, because we will be dancing for sure and then talking in the next hour does that sound cool can i see thumbs up the actual thumbs up okay and I see that not all of you are in, um, I can't see all of your videos and plus there's like three pages. So I'm going to do my best and scroll to see like what is happening. But if I miss something, just like I said, keep that thought in your head or write it down and then you will get a chance to ask me later. Does that sound good, Robert? Fab. 
Okay, good. So, actually, for the beginning, I would like you to take your shoes off and socks. I'm very comfortable. I'm not wearing any shoes or socks right now. And I want to address the specific footwork that I would like for you to implement in your international rumba. Okay, so, and it's good to do it without shoes because sometimes shoes with that Latin heel can get a little bit, um, it could become an impediment versus help. Okay, so here we go. Oh, first of all, actually, before everybody get up, uh, everybody start doing whatever I'm doing, everybody get up, and we're gonna do a, a bow, can you see me? Because that's how I start my classes and my workshops. And a curtsy for a girl. Ready, bow for the gentleman, okay? Five, six, seven, and bow for the gentleman, and curtsy for the lady. Okay, thank you, now I feel properly greeted. Okay, so the thing I want to, um, I'm going to show you right now, everybody can see my <laughs> dance war feet. Okay, so this is what I want to show you. So when you're dancing, and I'm sure your teachers have taught you about moving forward and moving back, right? So this is what I want you to do right now with me. First of all, we go into go through different stages. And if you've done ballet, you have a heads up. You might know all this already. So we have demi point, full point, demi point, flat. Let's do it with the other leg. Demi point, full point, demi point, flat. When you are moving forward or back in international rumba, your foot goes through all of these stages. So if you are, Female or male dancer, it doesn't matter. The footwork stays the same for the most part. So when you start to go, you're going to start with a demi point, weight on the inside edge of the foot, which creates this bevel look. The difference between a girl and a boy is that for the girl, we're going to continue the curve of the foot and create a curve around our leg. For the guy, you want to keep your knee straight, okay, or forward, yeah? The girls have a little bit of this overlap thing. So when you start with a demi point, slight demi point with the inside edge of the toe, so I'm really using my big toe, my middle toe, my pinky, and whatever that thing is next to the pinky, I don't even know the name of it, sorry English is second language, is, is relaxed, is not, not active at the moment. So when I'm going to take a step forward, I'm going to articulate my foot that it becomes a full point. I'm going to drag my toes on the floor. I'm going to then create a demi point and then go through that motion like a cat, roll through the foot and put my heel down. Once I put my heel down, I'm lifting the back foot. And then guess what? Now my back foot has to go through demi point to full point. Wah bam. One more time. So then when I'm here, there's no weight on that back leg. My big toe is touching. I have slight rotation, or you can keep it completely parallel with the, this leg. It's up to you. Yeah. And then again, I'm going to go demi to full, to demi, to flat. My back heel comes up, goes through rolling of the weight to the front leg. That's what your teacher calls push from your standing leg. Boom, 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 boom. Full point. Okay, I'm going to switch to gallery view so that I could see what y'all doing. <laughs> I've been watching too much Fixer Up or Sanan saying y'all to everybody. Too much, too much time. All right, let me see. Come on. Ready? So we start with the inside edge of the free leg that has no weight on it. Then we're going to articulate full, demi, flat, push up the back leg, demi, point. And there it goes, that little connection. Demi, flat, Push up the back leg, demi, full, a point, yeah? Demi, flat, 
Demi Fall. All right, keep going. I'm watching you. And it would be great if I could see your legs. There you go. I see somebody's legs. Fabulous. Great. Here we go. Choose a leg. Doesn't matter which leg. And here we go. Start with the bevel. Gentlemen, two. Just make, gentlemen, keep your knee forward. And here we go. Demi, two full, two flat. Push off the back leg. All the way, point, 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 point that back toe. Good. And now you're going to go through bevel. Two full, full point on the free leg. Two demi. Two flat push off. There you go. We're going to put some counts to it. Yeah, I like to add, I'm sure as the other teachers, and and as and all that good stuff. So this is what I'm going to count it as. So we start here. And actually, this is going to be ah. This is going to be and ah. Step. Push off. And uh, two, three, two, three. We're going to do two slow. Sorry, I should have warned you. So we're going to and two, push off, three, and four, push off, one, and two push off three and four push off one all right let's do it again i'm gonna watch you this time starting the end we always prep the end first and two step three here we go and four one and two point three and 4.1. Beautiful. Let's do it a little bit faster. Here we go. Five, six, seven, and go. Two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four, one, and two, three and four one all right i'm watching you here we go ready five six seven here we go step two push three and four one and two push three and four one and two push three and four good so this is a common thing that i'm seeing sometimes people do that was pretty good, guys, though. Good efforts. Good efforts. Good job. So from here, you go da, and then you just kind of go like this. See that? That didn't do anything for me. What I, why I want to use this footwork is that I can roll my body weight all the way to the front of my front foot, my standing leg, yeah? So that's what I want to do. I want to use this... Let's go this way, maybe it's better of you. I want to use this back leg that is now in the demi point that some, we call it split weight, but it's not really split weight. It's not 50-50 really. It's about 70-30. Here's 30, here's 70. Now I want to push that off, but the way I want to push it off, I don't want to just go. Because what it did for my weight, it still keeps me slightly back and back weighted, and I don't, that's not going to be good for me in the future. It's going to slow me down. It's going to make me slower and heavier. And those are not the best for lack. Good for ballroom. Yeah, walls is good. Box shot, so heavy. Maybe good. So I'm going to go four and then all the way. Use that weight that's in the back leg. I'm going to roll that weight from the back to the front. And that's how I'm going to get that full point in the back leg. The, the way it should feel here is like any more you're gonna fall. Any more you're gonna fall. That's the full weight. So if you can do this, that means you're in the full weight, yeah? Then what happens after that, when I go into my saddle action and now my free leg starts to go, yeah, there's that connection. So I'm slightly going to regain 
the weight back just a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna, again, extend that leg. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Let me see it one more time and then we're gonna go back. Ready, five, six, seven, here we go. Two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four, one, and two, three. Oh, I see somebody in the studio, very nice, beautiful. Let's do it one more time. I'll look at next page, five, six, seven, four, one, and step, push 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 and step, push, step, push, much better. Okay, so one little um, extra thing that I'm seeing, you do want to turn out your back leg. Okay, so when you go forward, like I said, the girls are beveled, the guys are more just forward knee, yeah? Or in flex, maybe it's not the best visual. But here, when I go forward now, my front leg, this one that goes through the full point to demi to flat, is pretty much in parallel. Now my back leg, as I push off, is going to turn out. And that is true for girls and boys. It's just the technique of movement, it's the same. Okay, so we go parallel, back leg, turn out. And so then when I go from here, what happens to my hips and legs? They square up. Parallel, back leg turns out. So what my back leg turns out, it helps my hips too. And then I square it off. Boom. Back leg turns out. And. Okay. Just a thought. All right. So let's move on to moving backwards. So when we go backwards, the front leg is in the turnout. So it's not parallel. It's in the turnout. It's like your body is confused for some of my dancer people there that do jazz and ballet. It's like your standing leg is in jazz. <laughs> and your, your moving leg is in the turnout. So that's a little bit like a little fun thing. So, so the standing leg is in the parallel and the, the free leg is in the turnout. Okay, so then when I go back, I'm going to, for the girls, go through the bevel. For the guys, you're just gonna go parallel like that. Girls go through the bevel. Then you're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna go Demi, flat, once that heel is down, your front leg goes through demi to point, and it turns out. Bevel, demi, flat, front leg goes demi to point, and it turns out. Okay, one more time. And back leg, moving leg, roll through it. Then front leg, demi to point, turn it out. It's a better line. That's why we do it. Looks good. Then you're going to bevel it in. Demi to point. Turn it out. And two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four. Show me your heel. And flat, show me your heel. And flat, show me your heel. All right, let me see you guys. Five, six, seven, here we go. And step, push off. And four, one, and two, three, and four, one. Good. All right, let's do it again. I'm scrolling through the pages here. Thank you. Here we go. Five, six, seven, here we go. And two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four. Same comment as before. Good job, guys. Don't throw your body weight. Roll it. Push it from your leg that you're coming from. What that means is, what I've noticed just a little bit, you, some of you do, about 35% of you, 
is this. You go in, and you just go, like I, I go in, woo! Yeah, and I want to control that. So I'm going from here, and now I'm gonna use that foot to control the shift of my body weight. And boom, and boom, okay. So let's try that again. Five, six, seven, four, one, and two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four, one, and good. Yeah, I see some of you in the garage, that's amazing. Okay, all right, so if you notice in yourself off balance without any shoes on, that's a problem. You see what I'm saying? Like you have no heels on, you have no, it's just you and the floor. Your foot is completely flat. And if for some reason you're starting to go like this, when you're doing it this slowly, that most likely means two things that are connected actually, is that you throw in your body weight, you throw in your upper body without controlling it from the lower body, without controlling it from your leg. And I'm sure your teachers were like, use your standing leg, both in the Latin and the ballroom. Right, Stuart? Yeah. So that's why I recommend to do something like that slowly by yourself, no partner necessary, without shoes on. And then when you saw it without shoes, then you go, okay, let me put my shoes on. Not to say that you now dance forever without shoes. Of course not. Okay. So this was our little thing. So the things that we went through, we went through different feet positions, which is demi point, full point to flat. We used how those transitions help us to actually shift our weight from foot to foot. Yes. And that we're using our foot like cats, how they they're use their paws to spring off or to walk, like when they stalk a birdie or something yeah they're stocking they're using they're they're articulating their 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 well hands toes paws yeah so the way you are doing this with your hands that's what you should also be able to do with your feet as a dancer if you're a lumberjack doesn't matter that's not the priority for you but if you're a dancer it so is okay now, if you have not been taking any ballet or any other forms of dancing but ballroom, I highly recommend if you're like, Anna, I have 300 things I need to do. I don't have time. So I'm going to give you a little bonus. I'm going to show you a few exercises that I do to learn to teach my feet or to keep, more likely to maintain my feet, maintain my footwork. And if you are in your ballet, in your jazz class, contemporary, whatever it is that you do, still do it. Won't hurt. Okay. So this is the time to do it with me and pay attention. Speaker view. Okay. So very simple. You are in the parallel. You put your hands here. You can put your hands here. You can keep your arms out. But you're in the parallel. You're going to go demi to point, demi to flat. Demi two point, demi two flat. Till the cows come home. But eight time will do. Then you do the same thing back. Demi two point, demi two flat. Demi two point, demi two flat. Point, flat, point, flat. So that was in parallel. Now we're going to turn into first position. Turn out and do it to the side. Demi two point, demi two flat. Demi two point. Demi two flat. Demi, yeah? You got the idea. Okay. Now we're going to add a flex. We're going to go demi flex to work on your Achilles tendon so it's flexible, so it's movable. Point flat. Point flex. Point flat. In first. Point flex. Now here, really work on your rotation and show me that heel. Point flat. Point flex, point flat. Same thing backwards. Point flex. Make sure your knee is totally straight. And point flex, point flat. Super simple, right? So simple. Okay. You're like, well, it's kind of boring. Yes, it is. It is boring. 
So put some fun music on for you or watch your favorite show. Make sure your knees are straight. And then when you're on the floor, you're gonna go point, flex. Make sure you don't sickle. Make sure your big toes are activated. The energy goes from the middle between your big toes and the middle toe, and it goes all the way to inside, inner thighs. Flex, start so have dirty feet. I was dancing with them. And then you do one at a time. I recommend everything but eight times. Doesn't have to be 80. And then you go circle, 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 and circle, circle, circle. And when you do these circles or these point flex on the floor, be conscious and actually go from when you when I'm gonna point my toes right now, I'm just not gonna do this. I'm gonna go demi to point, demi to flex. Demi to point, demi to flex. Then when I turn out, I go demi to point, collect, flex. Demi to point, same thing here. Demi to point, collect, flex. Demi to point, collect, flex. And the last one, but not least, if you have a towel or a sweater or something, you pull it with your toes towards you like this. Like I say, you do that with your fingers, do that with your toes. And then you push it out. Yeah? I have way more in my, my suitcase of tools, but I think for now, this is gonna be, gonna be good. You could do it before you're dancing, you could do it right after, you could do it first thing in the morning, when you're laying in bed, and you're like just trying to wake up and you do it. Those are all really, really good. Okay, so now my lovies, let's put our shoes on and use that flexible, juicy movement of our feet and toes and put it on rumba, okay? Alrighty, shoes on. Robert, you want to say something? Well, I think I did all of my talking in the beginning with, with uh, my epic introduction. Every that time I it. kept looking at your, over your career, I found new things, and some things I didn't even know about. So I, I wanted to mention them. My, my favorite new piece of information I learned was that you were in the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. I was. Oh, it's wonderful. Right? Yeah. You know. I didn't know that. <gasps> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That'll, I mean, that'll give at you the time bit. when that happened, that was about 10 years ago. I have to say, I was probably in one of the best shapes of my life because I was dancing so much and doing these exercises all the time, every day. So, yeah, that was a fun little thing to do. See, you never know where your dancing might get you. You might end, you might end up on Sports Illustrated. Edition. That's true. So stay in your the best shape of your life always. Uh, well, uh, for that particular shoot, I, I mean, I was very conscious of what I ate and working out and doing all that to specifically be a certain way for that shoot. And then after the shoot was done, I was like, okay, I'm going to go eat a big bowl of pasta <laughs> right now with the fattiest cream sauce, which I did. Oh, so, totally. Okay, guys. For popular requests from Robert Porch, we're doing the rump up. Um, so I'm going to face the mirror. So this way you're not confused. Because sometimes with like the mirror image, it's, it's, it's like, which leg is she starting from? But there you go. Okay. So we are going to start. We're going to blend a combination of female and male sides or versions of sliding doors with a few little extra tricks okay so there you go so we're gonna start to the left with the kukuracha we're not using the arms yet so let's focus on the feet put your arms here or here here just make sure they're not like dangling by your side okay so we're gonna do kukuracha to the left and two and three and four this is a girl's version, guys. Gentlemen, so really pay attention. You don't usually do that. Four, one, step back on left, right leg, two, three, four, one. And then here I'm gonna add a little fun little thing. And two, 
okay? And then here is gonna, you have an option. You can do an extra spiral turn or just do and four one. Or you can do two, three, and a four one. So let's go over that again. And two, three, and four one. And two, three, four one. And two, three, and a four one. If you're not doing the turn, I'm going to show you version two without the extra one and a half rotation. You're going ku ka ra cha half a turn, pivot half a turn, step back, two, three, four, one, and two, three, and then make slow this down. Still make it look beautiful. Two, three, and four, one, and two, because we want to meet all together back on the two. All right, one more time. And two, three, four, one. And two, three, four, one. And two, three, and four, one. And two, three, hold. All right, let's do it with the rotation, if you were doing the rotation. If not, then just remember that this is a stretch, stretch, it's a slow. Two, three, and four, one, a delay back walk, and then back on two. Here we go. Two, three, four, one. And two, three, four, one. And two, three, and a four, one. And two, three. Take a step forward, but let's just wait for a moment. All right, let me see you do it. Five, six, seven, four, one. And two, three, and four, one. And two, three, and four, one. Da 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 da. Four, one, and two, three. So, okay, little tip. Before you're gonna do the combination right now, we're gonna do it again. Make your decision whether you're gonna do that extra turn or not. Because if you're gonna try to wing it and make a decision in the middle, you're gonna be late. Mm -hmm. So if you're not gonna do the turn, it's fine. It's not about that. We, the topic of today is footwork, if anything. Stretch that two, three, yeah? If you're gonna do the turn, you need to start moving two and three into the rotation, otherwise you're not gonna make it. Let's do it again. Here we go. And kukaracha, two, three, and four, one. And two, three, and four, one. And two, three, and a four, one. And two, three, good. That was better, yeah? You were much more conscious and intentional about this. Awesome. Okay, so after we did two, three, and four, one, if you don't, tur if you don't turn it, and then we go back two, three, four, one, and then we're gonna switch it up, and now I'm gonna do the guys version of it. And we're gonna go two. So we, we just went back two, three, and four, one diagonal to the wall. Switch the direction into Czech Latin cross, two, three, four, one. And that's a guys version now. And we're gonna add, everybody loves this step. So I'm just gonna stay with it. And big, big, big stretch. Home. Yeah, we love it. We all love this big thing. Okay. Maybe that's not really footwork, but it looks good. All right, so we just finished our turn or we didn't do the turn, whatever. Then we go back, great basic, two, three diagonal to the wall, switch to check, three, four, one. Big, 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 big movement. Stretch, two, three. Four, one, and then we're gonna go and two, three, and four, one, and then we're gonna, just cause it's fun, we're gonna do bachucada in our own mind. Two and a three and a sit, cause why not? Yeah, one more time. Let's go from, um, after we just finished that one and a half turn, or no turn, yeah? Here we go. Back basic, and two, 
three and four. One, make it a full step. And then you go in check, three, four, one. This is a delayed walk. Into diagonal, I just change the direction. Then you go big, 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 big. Here, back to where you started. Press, press, then right foot back. Right bachucada, left bachucada, sit. Uh -huh. So for the gentlemen, I would recommend not to do the sit. I would re oh, guys, I mean, if you want to do the sit, do it. I'm not going to stop you, but I would recommend something a little different. Yeah? So after you did press, press, bachucada, bachucada, home. Still change the direction, but make it more sideways, a little bit more masculine that way. Well, like I said, whatever floats your boat. So let's go now from the very beginning of the whole combo. Yeah, I'm gonna do it with you once, and then I'm gonna watch you a couple times without music, and then we're gonna do a couple times with music. All right. Starting Kukaraja to the left, hand two, three and four, one, back basic, three and four, one, and two, turn or not, four, one, back basic, two, two, three, diagonal, diagonal check, delay, big, big, big stretch, boom, press, press, bachucada, bachucada, sit, or boom, whichever one, yeah, yeah, if you're gonna be a, a you want to do a more feminine way and do a really nice sit onto your right leg. If you want to do it a little bit more masculine looking, do whatever you want. Just make it look good. Okay, here we go. Five, six, I'm watching you. Please do seven. Here we go. Kukaracha, two and three and four, one. And two, three and four, one. And two, three and a four, one and base six, three and four, check forward, two and three and four, one, big lunge, two, three and four, one, and press, and press, and bachucada, bachucada, here we go, nice, let's do it again, a little bit faster this time, five, six, seven, here we go, two and three and four, one, and two and three and four, one, and two, three and a four, one, and two and three and four, one, and two, three, four, one, and two and a three and a four, one, keep going, two, three, four, one, but you got the, but you got the end. Okay. Maybe one more time, one more time for the, for the safety. It's always good to be safe than sorry, you know? Five, six, seven, here we go. Kukaracha, step, back, basic, press. Here we go, turn on, no, turn, and back, basic, step forward, change direction, check, two and three and delay, and big lunge with arms, boom, 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 and press, and press, and bachucada, bachucada, ha! Okay, I know I saw somebody did like three bachucadas, I don't know how you did it, but you did it, that was awesome. <laughs> okay, Robert, do you want to say anything? Are we good so far? Because we're going to go to do it to music. Would you like us to do it without music once, or you think we're okay? I think I would like the, for you to add music. That sounds good. I think the music is going to give make it more fun, huh? Yeah. Power on. Sorry, that's my guy. AUX in mode. Okay, now it's ready. Okay, so. Rumba. I have like Halloween kids music on my playlist right now. <laughs> Let me get out of that, get out of that for a moment. Um, are we feeling like an oldie? Are we thinking like a, oh yeah, let's do this one. 
Let's do this one. It's so cheesy and so like. When your legs don't work like they used to before. All right, here we go. And I'm, I can't sleep your fault. I will be doing it with you once, and then I'm going to be watching you a couple times. Cool? All right. Everybody saw that video. We're not going to be doing the stuff in the video. We're going to be doing international rumba. When your legs don't work like they used to before. And I can't sweep you off of your feet. Will your mouth still right. remember the taste of my love? Let's start on honey eyes. Will your eyes still smile Five, on your cheek? Six, seven, Darling, I will be Four. loving you till Four. 70. Everybody's favorite wedding song, right, Robert? Totally. I, was just, I was thinking about that. Every wedding dance that year was that song. I know. It's Love like, it. <laughs> oh, you weren't thinking out loud? Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> let me create something unusual for y'all. Okay, guys. Question. How does it sound, Robert? Maybe you guys can send Stuart. How does it sound when it comes from my end? It's good. Yeah, you can hear it just fine. Okay. Okay, guys, let's do it. When your legs don't work like let's skip the before. intro because the rhythm is a little bit fun. And I can't sweep you off of your feet. Just get into it. Start moving your hips. Get into your toes that are like fingers. The taste of my love. All right. Will your eyes still smile? Five, six. Seven, here we go, go for Racha. Two, three, hop. Three, Two, turn, 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 hop, back, break. Two, three, four, change direction. Shut, three, delay. Four, and press, and press, and jacka, 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 hop. Okay, good, let's do one more time. Way. We're gonna wait for a new phrase. Just the touch of my hand. Well, me, I fall in love with you every single day. And I just wanna tell you I am. Five, six, seven, so honey, here we I go. Kukaracha. Four, and two, Take three, to four, and two. Turn or not turn right now. Back, two, Kiss me three, the four, of the check, two, stops. three, delay, and big one, four, press, press, chaka, 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 sit, or stand. Nice, let's do one more time. Here we go, five, six, Seven, here we go, Kukaracha. And the crowds don't four, back, me. two, three, four. Keep going. When my hands don't play straight, two, the same three. Way. Change direction. Two. I know three, you will still up. love me the same. Two, three, Cause four. Honey, you're press. So who could never press. grow? And chaka 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 cha. Nice. All right, good times. All right, guys, this was pretty good. Well done. Oh, sha. Okay, so now let's let's go back to where we started, which is we talked about feet. So I want you to really, we have a little time left, but good. I want you to really focus on finding places that showcasing your feet. Okay, now, this is what I didn't say. Show me your feet all the time. I didn't say that. I said, consciously find places where footwork is going to be sh showcased. Does that make sense? 
Because if you're thinking about footwork, 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 I can't even say it fast, all the time, now guess what happens? The other things go away. Then maybe the hip action goes away. And then maybe, oh, somebody's calling me. Sorry. My bad. Yes. Maybe some other things go away, right? So we prioritize. We find moments where, we th where we're showing our feet, when we're showing our footwork, where it's really conscious. It's very strategic. Okay? We're not... Well, I can speak for myself. I'm not trying to do every single possible thing all the time because it's humanly impossible. We don't multitask. We go from action to action to action to action to action. We could do it one thing at a time really fast. We could do millisecond of a switch between your nervous system, your neurons go in one direction, then they go to the other direction. But there's still a little bit of a one thing goes, then another thing goes, and a third thing goes. Yeah? So I'm going to give you my version of strategic places that I would do. Now, after we're done, I would love for you to experiment with that in all your other routines. Yeah? Because that makes it more fun that way. Okay. So here's Anna's version of strategic places. Okay. So in the beginning, when we do the kukaracha, actually right before the kukaracha, I, I have a prep. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. Before we start, the music is going. We already going. We already going. And you could make it about your feet. You could make it about your foot. Boom, yeah, if you want to. That's a good place. But it's not necessary. But I already have energy in my body. I'm already ready to go into the two that way. And when I do the two, when I have the karacha, my feet are actually flat on the floor. So they go two and three. Yeah? So I'm actually not showcasing my feet here. I'm showcasing other things. Maybe it's my hips. Maybe it's my back. Maybe it's my arms. Yeah, whatever it is that you choose. So it's not about feet in the kukaracha. In the kukaracha, if anything, it's about the figure eight action. So we go two and three. Now when I go three, I have to shift my weight. Three and four, one. Now this is not me thinking about my feet. Because from four, one, I have to now think of prepping for the rotation on and two but now on two oh i'm gonna show my feet here two that's my first place when i'm actually making it like a big point two three and the next place is four is the press line this is my big opportunity here four hold one and so roll through that front foot and two if I'm not going to do the turn, if I'm going to do delay, I'm going to make it about my feet and about my hands and stretch because I have two counts. Two, three, and four, one. If I am going to add that extra rotation, I don't have time to think about my feet or anything really. I have time to do the turn. So I go four, one, and two. So I'm not actually going to go all the way to my full point and rotation. I'm gonna leave like 20% on this leg because guess what? I'm going to come back to that leg, boom, boom, boom. But here I'm gonna show the foot for one because it's a delay. Four and two, three, four. Now from here, because I'm going into change direction, I'm not necessarily going to showcase my front leg. I'm gonna showcase my back leg and check. Yeah. All right, then when I'm in my check, it's not about footwork, it's about changing direction and hip action and the leg position. So it's more about the legs versus the feet. So it doesn't mean your feet needs to be like this. Yeah, the feet are appropriate. They're still where they need to be, but they're not my focus. Two, three, now here, Delay walk is my back foot, is the focus because it's delay walk back. 
And then here again, when I do the big lunge, I can actually choose to showcase this foot. I can actually choose to showcase this foot, the other foot, the right foot. It's all about the timing you want to use. You want to go into that lunge as a delay and really reach into it and then get out of it faster. Or you want to get there faster and then show me the foot a little bit longer and then go, go on. Your choice. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Then when I do two press line, that's a no-brainer. That's definitely me thinking about my feet. Sure. But here again, we can do the first one and then the second one. Or we can choose to do the first one as a lunge, then a press line. Yeah? So we have options. If I'm going to make it as a lunge, I'm not going to think about my feet, but I'm going to think about my feet on the second one for sure. With a bachicata, it's again, it's about the hips and leg action and fast footwork, not so much about the footwork like stretching your feet. Yeah, so it goes two and three and then boom, definitely show me your foot. Yeah, if you're going to go as a more, more of a split weight, still show me that foot. Yeah? All right, let's put it on the wheels one more time. I'm going to talk you through it, but we're going to continuously go in through the motions. All right, here we go. Four, one, two, and no footwork, yeah? Two, and three, and four, one. Now show me the big one on two. Two, three, press line, show me the foot. Now show me the foot if you don't turn. Don't worry about it if you do turn. And four, one, show me the foot here. Two, three, forward step, back foot shows. Check, three, show me this foot. Then I'm going to choose to show you my left foot now. Forward, lunge, press, rhythm, rhythm, ha! I'm going to watch your guys' versions of this with that music. Um, one time probably with that music, and then we have a few more times with music. Okay, ready? Here we go. And two, three, and four, one. And two, three, and four, one. And two, three, and a four, one. And two, three, and four. Bo, show me the back foot. Check. Three, and show me the delay. And two, three, and four, one. And press or lunge, press or lunge. Yaka dagga dagga dagga, sit. Show me that nice foot. No, don't move. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. All right, let's do one more time with that music. And a little bit faster. Two and three, four, one. Kukaracha. Two and three and four, one. And two and three and four, one. And two, three and four, one. And two and three and four, one. And two, three and four, one. And big lunge. Four, one. I love the little press and press. And jigga, 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 ha! Nice, beautiful. I love that somebody added their like contemporary spin to it. I love it. Beautiful, gorgeous. Okay, you guys ready to do it to music? I think we're ready. I think we're all ready. Okay. We keep in the song, Robert, you like it? It's good tempo, it's slower. That's why I think it's good for now when we're thinking about things. <laughs> When your legs don't work like they used to before And it's about legs in the beginning, huh? And I can't sweep you off of your feet Will your mouth going. still remember the taste Start of Start thinking that you're going to be moving your body to this music, get into it Will your eyes still smile Five, from your cheek? Five, six, seven, Darling, eight, I go. will be loving you Two. 
And baby, my Show. heart could still fall out. It's Jasper. Heart at 23. And lunch. Press. And I'm thinking about how people fall in love in the steel. All right, your version, guys. Let's do it. Maybe just the touch of a hand. Well, me, I fall in love with you every single day. New phrase, day. waiting for the new phrase. And I just want to tell you I am. Six, seven, so honey, here now. we go. Kukaracha. Hop. Two, three. Hop. Two. Yeah, da, 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 da. Hop. We found love right where we are. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now I want you to exaggerate those intentions for me. Okay? Especially if you're um, newer to this whole Latin ballroom thing. It's it's about um I think somebody explained it to me. I think it was Nadia Eftadel that explained it to me once. And she said, you know, you feel like you're really doing it, but we don't see it. So what you have to do is you have to do it like you're ridiculously doing it. Like it's so much that it's too much that you're doing it. And then we'll see it. Yeah. So whatever you're experiencing through your own self, if you don't exaggerate it, we won't see it. So really exaggerate it right now for me. The intention of those places of footwork. Yeah. All right, let's do it. When my hair's all but gone and I'm Five, not six, seven, here we go. Two, and the three, crowds don't hop. remember my name. And show me that foot. Now, now. And two, yeah, da, 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 da. And two, three, four. And check. I know you will still four. love me the same. And launch, beautiful. Honey, and press. So who could never Top. grow? Chicka, 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 chicka. Very, 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 very nice. I am really pleased with you guys and I'm gonna let you go for five minutes so we can all get a little bit of water get a little bit of whatever you need to go to the bathroom or stuff and I'll meet you in my office in five minutes <laughs> I'm gonna mute myself and, and turn the video down okay Robert okay sounds great yes okay. thank you everybody take a break and we'll see you right back here uh, in five minutes you can um, I want to get to the um, interview and Q&A here in a second. But first I wanna talk about what a great masterclass that was that uh, Anna just gave everyone. Please give Anna a big round of applause, a virtual round of applause. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you guys. Mwah. I absolutely love all the footwork stuff. I love the, you know, being bigger than you think you need to be. And also I was, I was when I was watching some of um, Anna's videos on rumba, I noticed that in some of them, she is smiling, which I have told people it's okay to smile during rumba and they all want to be like, very serious. And I was, I was very happy to see that. But you get to actually look like you're having a good time. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I love that. And I love the masterclass. So thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for, um, thank you for your best foot, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> And with the with the interview, um, you know, session in mind, yeah, I, I know that your career has had so many like twists and turns, and and you used your dancing um, to make all these opportunities for yourself in the entertainment industry. And right. I, I thought you'd be perfect person to talk to the OSHA kids and the SGV kids because I see these kids as having all this dance training, but also you know, being very creative, you know, branching out and having other interests at times. Um, yeah. you know, big personalities. And I thought you'd be the perfect person to, to talk to them about this and how it's not always just competition life and then into sure. and pro-am life. Sure. 
Um, so with that in mind, um, I don't want to take all the good questions uh, for, <laughs> uh, to ask Anna. So please, um, who has a question to kick this off? It could be about anything, anything at all. And if you're being very shy, you can put it in the chat and I'll read it. Two participants raised hands. Okay. Oh, really? Oh my gosh. Let me see here. There's, they're so, they're so well trained. They raise their hands. I like it. I like it. Let me see. Let me see if I can tell who has hands. Like physically raising your hands. No, no. They're in the, in the, in the chat. They're raising your hand. Brody. Oh, hey, Brody. Oh yeah. Hey, let's let's dude. Unmute, let's unmute Brody and have him uh, ask his question. Okay. Um, so I know you've judged, um, throughout your dance career. Um, Still so do. when you're judging, what do you like see like most of the mistakes, like in like younger dancers and yeah. Well, the thing about judging is that we have certain criteria, and those steward judges too. And then some of the other, um, you know, wonderful coaches do judge as well. And they'll probably back me up on this. Um, but we have um, criteria. First one is always musicality. Is are you on time or not? Does that make sense? And then the second one is, um, well, I'm going to talk about Latin specifically. Is do you know your steps? Yeah. Because sometimes I see even in advanced levels and maybe... Um, they just learned the routine or they've learned the routine and it's a kind of a complicated routine and they don't really know their timing and their direction. So to me, that means you don't know your routine or they, whoever, right? Knowing your routine is knowing your timing and direction. Okay. And after that is presentation, which includes the way your posture looks, the way your arm styling is, is it again, placed, is it intentional? Or is it kind of just an accident? Um, and then after that, of course, is we want to see you guys have fun. We want to see the smiles. We want to see the positive. Sorry, I'm at the studio. We want to see the, yeah. I'm not gonna answer that. So we want to see the positive energy. And then if you're dancing with your, um, your partner, we do want to see the interaction. Sorry, I'm just gonna close the door. Does that kind of answer your question or do you want to know specifically like the most common mistakes everybody does? Brody. I, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad. I'm, I'm realizing I can't see the chat right now. So everybody let's do the, the old school, um, you know, put your hand up and then. Um, Jude Kamaya. Oh, great. Let's unmute Jude and let's have your question. All right. Hello. Um, how did you go about finding an agent for dance or like, how did, how do you recommend? How do you go? Oh, this is a tough question. This is like everybody's question, isn't it? If you're in LA and you're in the industry. Um, so for me, I got very fortunate guys and the agent found me. Uh, and I've been with this agent for, gosh, I want to say 15 years. The funny thing is that agent is theatrical and commercials and stuff like that, but not a dance agent. Believe it or not, I actually don't have a dance agent. Yeah, but I am my own agent. And just through my own connections, because uh, I've been in the ballroom industry, in the ballroom world, from quite an early age, and I know some people um, in different countries, I was fortunate enough to create these opportunities. Like today, for example, you know, Robert was part of our studio for a few years, and you know, we hung out and we had fun, and we almost filmed the reality show together that never went anywhere. But you know, we had that opportunity, and it could have gone somewhere. You just never know. So, um, yeah that's that's kind of like where i'm gonna go uh, and with that said i would not rely on an agent i would rely on yourself and be your own self agent yeah and create relationships with people that are now you with because some of them you're dancing with now and they in your dance class but they'll become producers they'll become 
creators or they'll become competition owners or studio owners or whatever it is. And then you'll hopefully be able to call them and be like, hey, no, what's up? Can I do something for you? Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Two more. Bella and Lucas. Bella Garza and Lucas McCollum. Hi, I was wondering if you have any advice for us younger dancers on how to discover dancing with our bodies and learning ourselves better through dance. Okay. Is it an actual like physical question or is it more of a spiritual one? It could be both. I mean, just figuring out how to dance with our bodies and ourselves. Do you have any advice with that? Okay. So I, I think what you're asking me is to dance with yourself is how to have the true emotion that comes through that it's not, um, here's a, here's the mindset a lot of the times. And I've had it for many years is the mindset of a student. When people tell you go left, go right, go straight, do this three times, go this, da, 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 right. And then, um, whatever you, whoever you work with, you start to a little bit look like them. And they say, oh, well, this is, and this is happening now too with the, with the world. They go, well, this is Slavic student. And this is Yuli and Ricardo student. And this is Michael Malitovsky student because they start to look a little bit like them. Um, and it's actually okay because the first way we learn is we learn through imitation. And we imitate long enough that after a while we imitated this and we imitated that and we imitated this and then we visualize like well how would i look like if so sorry i don't know they all decided to call at the same time if so and so dancer that you like how would she do this step and then you imagine it in your head and go, let me try that. See how it would feel in her skin. So you actually imitate first till that you've built enough your little imitation pods that then you go, mm, I think that one. And then I didn't think this one. And now it's this one. And then you start mixing and matching things until you become your own chef, until it becomes your own recipe. Does that, does that answer this? Yeah. So listen to your teachers. <laughs> okay, who else? Lucas, I think we have Lucas. Hi. Hi. Um, so what do you normally do to like get in the zone like the day before a competition? Like, like how do you like plan out your day to like what mm. you and what you do? Mm. Uh, well, I want to make sure I got enough sleep. That's for one. And I want to make sure that, well, I did when I used to compete or when it's the same, whether you compete or whether you're going to, whether now I'm going to have a day of performing, maybe I have two shows with show like Bowling with a Twist or Motown with a Twist or whatever the other shows that I've been part of. Yeah. And next day I go, okay, I have a, a show day uh, or whether I'm going to be on set for either acting or, or dancing, dancing, acting, whatever it is or even a day of teaching at somebody's studio. Yeah, because it's you got to be on. So it's the same thing, really. Um, get a good night's sleep. Uh, make sure you hydrate. You drink plenty of water. You feed yourself the foods that give you energy, that don't take your energy away. What that means, things that give you energy is, sorry, I'm going to be a little bit, I mean, obviously, if you have any specific allergies, then ignore what I said. But you know, greens and vegetables and fruits, rich foods that are full of energy, full of color, full of life. Yeah, so I'm not necessarily a believer that you need to eat chicken pasta the day before. I don't think so. I think you got to eat whatever your body feels it gives you energy. Like sometimes when you eat like in and out, then, then after that you feel heavy. You feel kind of like whoa, big lump is in your tummy. Well, that's not going to give you energy. That means it's taking your energy away. That means it's taking so much energy for your body to digest that your food. that You don't really want to do that before you perform, compete, or whatever it is that you do. Yeah? 
Um, that's when it comes to physical, but when you take care of the physical, you wake up, you're in a better mood, you have more energy, your um, tolerance for stress is much better, right? So that, that's just, that's just an, um, logical. Um, when it comes down to um, sort of getting in the zone type of thing, whatever works for some people, for me, it worked to um, be in my own corner on the day of performing and just kind of visualizing what I'm going to do, presetting my intentions, even though I wasn't, I didn't call it then like that, but I would visualize and just go, okay, like this. For some people, it's getting to the ballroom or theater three hours ahead and just being there, just sitting there, being, being there, just like, you know, and then for other, that wasn't my thing. I didn't need to be there. I was there 30 minutes before. And in fact, the least amount of time I would spend in the ballroom, which would drive my partners insane because like, we want you there three hours before. And I'm like, I don't want to be there three hours before I'll show up an hour before and I'll sit in my corner right there. This is where I'm going to meet you. So that was my, my um, process. And then some people, they go and they hang out and they talk and they just interact. And like, that's, that's what, um, makes them tick. That's what makes them um, get ready for the event. Hope that answered your question, Lucas. It did. Thank you. Good. All right. J Janae, Janae Holster. So I'm keeping Hi. an eye. I'm keeping an eye. Hi. Um, let me see. Um, I was wondering, because I know you've done a lot in your career, so when the job gets hectic or you're struggling to find your motivation, what keeps you grounded and what brings you back to dance? Oh, okay. So I had my, my plate times when I would freak out and cry my eyes out. And um, the way it works for me, and I found a, a very clear connection between sleep and freaking out. The same situation, um, I would be very similar to like, you know, 99% of similarity and I got decent rest and it didn't bother me that much. And then the other time I, for whatever reason, maybe I flew into another country, I'm jet lagged and it would really get me, it would really bother me. So um, that's definitely number one. Number two is um, there is such thing as burning out. And when you're inside of yourself, you're like, I just would rather be doing something else than this. That means you burn out. You take a break. But you be honest to yourself. You don't be like, well, they all doing it. Well, it doesn't matter what they're doing. You got to do what you got to do. That makes sense. Yeah. And then you give yourself a permission to say, I'm going to take a sabbatical. I'm going to take a break hiatus, whatever you're going to do. I'm going to read hundred books. If that's what gets you, I'm going to paint a painting. I'm going to, whatever that gives you joy. I'm going to go hang out with my friends. I'm going to go hang out with my family. I'm going to, you know, whatever it is, something that's enriching you in the way that fills you up. And artistically, we, we need nourishment, not just, um, obviously we talked about it right now with, with the other guys uh, physically, but we need nourishment emotionally, spiritually, and psychologically too, okay? So when you feel you're on the low, that means your reservoir is really on the bottom and you got to fill it up with other stuff. You know, that might be, well, now it's tough. Like you can't just go to a museum now, yeah? But I used to love going to museums seeing other people's art and just soaking it in. Now you do it virtually, I hope. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Good questions, guys. You're good. All right. Hana Ayala, is that the way you say it? Raise your hand. Um. Yeah, it is. I have a question. So yeah. what do you think is one of the most important things to know when you're working in a partnership? One or a couple. <laughs> There's no one really. Um, hmm. 
Okay, so I've had many different dance partners starting partners starting on the at the age of six that were my amateur partners and then professional partners. And then also I had celebrity partners, 11 of them, and they were all very different. So the thing about um, when you work with a partner with another person, the first thing that I've learned with bruises, emotional bruises and lots of drama is you got to remember they're not you. And they're their own person and they're different. They're just different. They are. They, they are like a whole other species. That's number one. Number two, there is a thing about the way boys are and the way girls are. And that is totally different. There's a wonderful book called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. I recommend to read it, not just for romantic relationships, but just for relationships with guys, or just getting them to get to understand them a little bit better. So um, if I have to give you that one advice, it would be that. Accept them for who they are, that they're different. Give them the space to be themselves and also give them the space to make their own mistakes and don't try to fix it for them. Okay. I hope that helped. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay. What's up? Who else is that? Other people are like, yeah, this is good. I'm eating. <laughs> Somebody else ready? Or or Robert, you can just ask some questions. No, I see some physical hands that went oh, up. Physical hands. Okay, good. Uh, the other Hannah. Hi. I just Hi. Have a question. So, how do you? How do you motivate yourself to continue dancing when you haven't had a partner in a really long time? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, the first, so I think we, a lot of people are going through this right now, especially with COVID. I mean, unless you like live, that's your sibling or something, you know, or you guys are quarantining together. A lot of people are not able to dance in, in, in partners. Um, the thing that I would, and I had moments when I didn't have a, a partner for some time. Um, and the main thing to focus on is that the right partner will come if you're ready. It's like being lucky. The, uh, the right opportunity meets preparation. But when that opportunity comes and it will come, you better be ready. Because if you're not ready, the, the right, right opportunity, a.k.a. a partner, will come. They'll have a tryout with you and they say, well, not you, me, whoever. Mm, you know, it's okay. So you want to make sure that you get yourself so darn good, so just like the best you can be, the best you can be, not Anna, not Robert, not whoever, that when that right opportunity comes and dance solos, just put yourself out there. Just put your dancing, even if it's a solo dancing, just shine, girl, just shine. And then the right, the right person, the right partner will appear. Because at the end of the day, it's about you and not the partner. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Good. Glad. I saw that uh, Grace Kim had a question. Okay. Um, hello. Um, Hi. Uh, my question was kind of similar to Hannah's question, but more about how do you plan your week and your practices? Like, mm -hmm. for example, in the morning, do you uh, stretch for a few minutes? And um, I was just wondering how you plan your practices to keep motivated and in shape and... Okay. Yeah. So um, the thing that got me in the zone always is to warm up. So I would actually dedicate about between 20 to 45 minutes to a warm up before I even started dancing or doing, working on my routine or working with my partner. Then, so those were some longer rehearsals. Um, and then also not so much with the celebrity partners, but even with celebrity partners who are like, you know, they're like pro-am. They're like your babies. They're like, so what are we doing? They're like, hold my hand and lead me through it. Even with them, I would go to the studio 
and I would work on my own stuff first. I would dance throughout my whole routine by myself before I even like touched another person. Now that wasn't always the case. Back in the day, um, when I was maybe your guys' age, um, I would go, it's his fault. You know, he pushed me off the leg and maybe so, maybe he did push me off the leg. Actually, even when I was already a pro and already much, much older, I would still like do the blame game. Yeah, and like, just, it's not worth it. it totally isn't. So just warm up. I recommend 20 to 40 minutes of your own work. So let's say you warm up for 20 minutes, then another 20 minutes you go through your own stuff. And that is before you start with, with your, uh, let's say you have a partner or you in the team or whatever. And then if they don't do it, going back to the same thing about how to work with the, with the partner the best, if they don't do it, it's okay. That's their choice. They don't have to do the same thing that you do. Okay. And the next thing is, um, I think 20 minutes is kind of an important, um, number because it's, it's 20 minutes. Your brain can actually focus on one topic. And every 20 minutes, you want to switch it up. So like you did, I don't know, cha-cha for 20 minutes and you worked on musicality. And then after that, you're like, okay, my, your brain is like, okay, I'm done. And then you still, your, your ego is like, well, I'm not done yet. I really feel I could get better. Well, don't. Drop it, move on to something else. Maybe work on the rumba arms. Or you can even choose the same dance and do 20 minutes of musicality, 20 minutes of arms. And then, I don't know, whip some 20 minutes of freestyle. Well, that's already almost an hour and a half. Plus the like 20, 40 minutes of your own work. So that's like a couple hours right there. Okay. Helpful. Awesome. All right. Let me see who else has their hand up. Let's see here. Is there anything in the chat? Some, so so far, I don't see anything in the chat. People are like, I see a Naomi, Robert. Naomi, oh. Naomi. Yeah, can we spot, uh, unmute yourself, Naomi? Oh, hi, I'm Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Anna. Um, I was. My question is, when resources are so limited right now because of the pandemic, I know so many dancers that just don't have the opportunity to go to a studio. Like for example, I'm dancing a lot on a rug right now. Um, and so things are really limited. And I was wondering what your motivation would be for young dancers that just have little to no resources. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Get creative. <laughs> that would be, I mean, the fact that you're dancing on your, on your house's rug, it's being creative. We're still doing it. It doesn't really matter how you do it, where you do it, as long as you do it. If you do it on a small kitchen place or you do it in the garage or you do it, um, let's say a friend of yours, have a patio that's wooden. You're like, hey, I'll be outside. Yeah, so we're not gonna, we're gonna still social distance. Can I, please? And they'll they'll probably get a kick out of it. They'll probably watch you go, oh, that's cool. But you should get used to people watching you anyway if you're planning to perform, right? So um, just get creative like that. And um, I mean, I'm fortunate that I have a space to go to. But uh, during like the first couple of months of uh, pandemic, I mean, everything was on lockdown. Our studios were closed for three, almost four months. And I danced and I taught classes out of my living room. I moved the furniture. I'm lucky that I have hardwood floor, but I would teach out of my living room. And, you know, that's, that's just, you got to do, you adjust. Yeah. Thank you so much. I hope that answers your question. Okay, cool. Let's see who else has their hand up or has something in the chat. Let me see. You know what? I'm going to add to Naomi's question. Become friends with people who have studio space. Contact them and be like, hey, I am so-and-so. Can I come and use your space? And let's say you can't pay floor fee. You'd be like, I'll clean your space once a week and do whatever that they need to be done. Be like, hey, because studio owners, like just being a studio owner myself, I'm like, I we always need stuff done. Somebody has to do our social media. You're probably good at that. 
Somebody needs to do return our phone calls. Somebody needs to do that. There's always these little things that are like, we can do them, but we have other things we got to do, the priority. And you do, look, I'll do whatever you guys need me to do. Can I please use your space like twice a week? And they'll be like, yeah. So trade with them. Yeah. Okay. Robert has a dance studio. <laughs> My dance studio is actually just a, a really uh, made up garage. Exactly. But it's a space. It's a dance space. I see you dance there. <laughs> totally. You yeah, still I, need your floors cleaned, Robert. It's okay. <laughs> that's true. I need I need social media stuff. I don't have the patience for Thank that. Thank you. Exactly. You exactly. Maybe Brianna needs a babysitter. <laughs> I don't know how comfortable she is with some person. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I'm open. I'm open. See? Send in your resume. See? Just get creative. Okay. I saw a question from Megan. Okay. Um, so my question was just... What are some things that um, you found to like look out for in the entertainment or barroom industry that you maybe wish you knew before or um, that you would want to like warn someone of? Oh, I see. <laughs> Um, are we talking about like, um, a certain type of harassment, something specific like that, or just general? Just general, like some things that could get like discouraging or some things like being told no. Oh, I see. Somebody was told me about that. Something that you'd like to remember. Right. I gotcha. So if I let's 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 let me rephrase that question of yours, Megan, if you if I may. Yeah. If I would now talk to my 25 year old self that was entering 20. Actually, I was younger than that. 24 year old self that was entering Hollywood world. What would I say to myself? Yeah. Is that your question? Is that the question? I hope so. This is what that's what I'm gonna say. I would say to myself, try to the best of your ability to not compare yourself to other people. Because you're not them, they're not you. You have your and it's a girl, it's tough. Even now I struggle with it. I struggle with it, especially with social media. It's so much worse than it used to be. You look at their Instagram posts and like everything is peaches, but it it's what they are putting. Yeah, that's not reality. It's a show. Everything is for show. Uh, the TikTok videos, the da 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 da. I mean, it's like just stay on what you want to do. Stay on what makes you happy, and take care of your own self. And then if somebody want, has something that you like and you kind of start to get envious of them, you start to compare yourself to them, that's actually a healthy thing. That means that there's some element in that person, that girl, that boy, whatever, that you like, this is cool. So the, the way to go about it, and gosh, I wish I would told that myself. I, was, I had so many envy moments, like younger, terrible, very destructive. The things that I would say to myself is like, this is the quality that I like in this girl or this guy. It's not like I want everything that this person has. No, I just want that thing. And I feel the lack in myself of that thing that's missing in me. Okay. How do I go about getting it? Now that's productive. That's getting creative. That's getting forward thinking, right? So not to compare yourself to others. And if you do tend to compare yourself, which is very natural, we all do it. Look, I still do it. It's it's to go, okay, what is exactly that is I want? It, what is it that I see? And I go, gosh, I really want this. What is it? Pinpoint that particular quality or 
personality trait or hairstyle or whatever it is and go, cool, I want that. How do I get it? That's it. I hope that was helpful. Yeah, Megan, your your intern is a tiny bit slow. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, very okay, helpful. Anna. Thank you. Yeah. What's up? Oh, uh, oh, you just froze for a second, but now you are back. I'm back. Um, let's see if there's any other uh, hands up. I hope you you heard my, me preaching about not comparing yourself to others. I did. I actually love that. Um. I thought that was a good perspective on it. And there's, I see a kind of a- Not mine. I, 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 you know, I'm a, I have a YouTube PhD. <laughs> <laughs> so I listen to a bunch of like, um, I really enjoy it too, like psychology talks and like different, basically shrinks talking because I would rather listen to them than pay them big bucks, so. <laughs> I feel like you almost have to be. You have to be so resilient to have the career you've had and the multifaceted career in the industry. I do feel like you have to be like crazy tough and have a good way of talking yourself down from the ledge. And yeah. <laughs> okay. I see Audrey Say has a question. Hi. Hi, Audrey. We were all dancers and we all fell in love with dance in different ways. Yeah. And so I was wondering what made you fall in love with dance and your particular type of dance and what made you realize that you wanted to do this as your career? Oh, wow. That's a, like a three level question there, isn't it? Okay. Well, hmm. in the beginning, in the beginning, there was nothing. No, but, um, I'm sorry, I'm just getting some water. Uh, my mom and my dad were actually professional ballroom dancers. So my mom asked me to go to the studio when I was six. She just, she first put me to gymnastics at five, but I was complaining a lot. And it was like rhythmic gymnastics with the, like the super stretchy, gooey ones. And they back, that was back in like, that was still Soviet Union guys. That wasn't even Russia. We were still like communist country. And back in the communist countries, I mean, they stretched you like, like they didn't care if you cried. And I remember them stretching me and they took me, the, the coaches were like, if she's flexible enough and she's not gonna be too tall, so we'll take her. Like they had to audition me to even take the class. And uh, they were stretching me and I went there for three months and I complained, I said, every single fiber in my body hurts. And I cried about it to my mom and she's like, I'm not gonna torture my child, forget it. Um, and so she brought me to ballroom dancing and first she was like hey you want to go take a class and i was like sure whatever i see you dance i see i see papa dance i see all your friends dance there's no worries sure it was a very natural transition it's like they would be like hey you want to go to the park hey you want to go play ball it would like it was like that it was very very um not unusual for me so then when i started dancing I think the social factor of it was what kept me in interacting with other kids and wearing pretty costumes. Show you, this is a little embarrassing. That's me. I'm about nine. Oh, look at that foot. Did I fix my footwork or what? Yeah, right? The, my partner meant in the perfect check. He's in the perfect check position. I'm on the other hand, I don't even know what I'm doing. My arm's okay though. And I'm smiling. <laughs> so then um, I took a break from 10 to 11 because I wasn't sure that I want, I, this partner, this guy broke my heart. He stopped, he stopped dancing. He went into ma mathematics school, like a special tough math school. And he had way too much homework and he dumped me. That's how it felt. At, Ten, at, at nine, ten. So then I took a year off and um, I really sort of thought about do I want to dance or do I not? Like, what do I want to do? Very important thoughts at 10, you know? Uh, so then at 11, my mom's like, yeah, you know, there's this guy. He's, he's two years older than you, but you know, what do you want to do? And I said, yeah, I miss it. I miss dancing. I miss moving. I miss traveling with my friends. 
So I went back into it. So not until really like 14, I want to say, did I really became conscious that I like it, that I like working on technique, that I like the feeling that I'm improving, that I'm constantly learning something. And that started to get me like a, a hook, right? So the realization the full realization actually happened after high school when I moved to the United States and my mom was like, look, I can help you with finding work. You know, you can work as a receptionist at the dance studio. I got this job for you, but I can't pay for your school. I can't pay for your college. So if you want to dance, this is a way for you to earn that money and to pay for your dance. Or if you want to earn that money and go to school, community college, whatever, that's what you're going to do. And I said, I'm going to dance. I don't want to go to school, but that was conscious because I actually really like school. I actually really like learning. But at that moment, I was like, I would 10 times, 100, hundredth times, I don't know, million more times would rather be sweating at the dance studio and getting blisters than learning about whatever. I really had a passion that I'm in New York City. I'm going to learn from the best teachers right now. And this is like, this is my chance. This is my opportunity. So really at like 17, I made that decision. I turned pro at around 18 because I started teaching at the Fred Astaire Dance Studios. Yep, I did that. And then I moved to California at, um, well, I moved around a little bit. I went back to Russia and moved to California at 20. And that's it. The rest is history. That was a very long answer. Sorry about that. I actually really like that topic because a lot of our juniors or seniors or even sophomores, you know, are coming into this moment of yeah. college and that sort of thing. I know it's a sensitive area. I don't want to say too much about it. Me, but Donna, you can say whatever you want. Um, <laughs> so does anybody have any questions for Anna about that? College um, versus other things. Um, in the arts, because I honestly I was looking at, and let me know if somebody's hand goes up. I was looking at Hannah. Raise the oh hand. yeah, oh Hannah, is that your hand again, or was that from before? Yeah, I have another question. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> so being a I woman, I see your face more. Can you move your camera? Because I see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. There you go. So being a woman in this industry, what do you think are some stereotypes or like road bumps you've had to overcome? Okay, are we talking about ballroom industry or are we talking about entertainment industry? Because those are different things. Entertainment wise. Entertainment. Mm. Well, <clears throat> I feel like there's how old are we have? Do we what's the youngest person that's on the chat right now? Should should be around 12. Okay. So the stereotypes for women in the entertainment industry, I mean, they're not really just the entertainment industry. They kind of like throughout, they're just exaggerated in the entertainment industry. Anything you see, anything you see in the arts is just the exaggeration of life. So whatever you see and hear that's happening in the arts, it's happening everywhere. It's happening around you. It's happening in your neighborhood. It's just in the arts, it's like extra, you know, like we talked about exaggerating today with your footwork. The stereotypes with the, with the females, um, the one of the things that I had um, came, up, came across to specifically on Dancing with the Stars is because I had a lot, I mean, all my celebrities that I danced with were obviously guys and a lot of them were athletes um and I'll just tell you a little story I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible because we almost at the end and I want to answer all your questions was um I was actually coaching Kurt Warner and that was already after six seasons or something that I was on the show and um he's the nicest guy ever he is so polite he is such a gentleman he's genuinely a really good guy family guy you know i mean he probably has some bad traits but like they're like this bit but anyway so he was i was coaching him and i was being tough on him and i said hey da -da -da, like i was 
Russian with him. I was very like, boom, we got to do it. Da, 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 da. And I was like, and I could just see his face. His facial expression was like, like oh, this woman nagging me. And I'm like, Kurt, if I right now would be a male telling you exactly the same things in the exact the same tone of voice about the same thing, you would say, tough coach. But because I'm a female, because I'm half your size, because I'm younger or whatever, you think other things. We have a 12 year old here. I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Whatever I said was the word B. Yeah, I said, you think I'm a B. I hope, I hope that everybody understand the word I said. And that's just because I'm a woman. I said, well, it, and he kind of looked at me and he was like, but because he's such a nice guy, he was like, I gotcha. I understand. And that was, that was our conversation. After that, I was a tough coach to him and he took it like a champ and he got so good and I'm so proud of him. So that's probably one of the things, yeah, that you got to be pretty. You got to keep your mouth shut. You're going to look, just look at the news casters that are females. They wear like a pound of makeup on their face, their fake lashes, their hair is all perfectly done, especially on the certain news networks. We're not going to go which ones, but they're like Barbie dolls. They're Barbie dolls and they're intelligent women and the things they say, they're world-class reporters, but they, they still have to do all that. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, the positive of it is that we have it. And if we choose to go that route, as long as we make it as a conscious choice, Whatever you're going to do, make it a conscious decision. I'm going to do all that because I participate in the ballroom dance competition and I'm going to do the fake lashes and the fake tan because that's the protocol. If it bothers you that much, if you feel like that's demeaning to you as a female, as a strong personality, don't do it. Don't do it. But don't ever do something because you feel you have to. You don't have to do anything. As a female, I'm sure the same probably would be for the guys, right, Robert? Yes, I'm, re I'm required to, you yes. know, put all this together before yes. Zoom it takes even. It hours to get ready. <laughs> yeah. I hope I've answered your question, Hannah. If we wouldn't have 12-year-olds, I'd probably go a little bit deeper into that, but this is sort of the surface that I was able to. That was great. Thank you. Welcome, love. Okay, what else we got? All right, who else has their hand up? Anyone? Chat. We have somebody in the chat. Oh, yeah? It's from Sashel Garner. As a commercial dancer in high school, is it too late to study ballroom and be good enough to be on, for example, on Dance with the Stars? No, it's not too late. It's never too late. Um, you are in high school, so it's perfectly fine. Um, six time world champion in international Latin who was, who ha who was a much higher level dancer than what you see on dancing with the stars right now. Karen, um, there's a Carmen, the name is just Carmen, Carmen Vincelli is her last name, but, um, she started dancing at 17. She never danced before ever. She danced nothing. Not a commercial dancing, not ballet, and not tap, nothing. She started at 17 and she became six or eight times, you can Google it, times world champion. So no, not too late. Okay, what else? <clears throat> How did you get casted to be a pro in Dancing with the Stars and what was the audition process like? Okay, now we get into real questions in the last 10 minutes of our time. <laughs> yes, Eva. So that was um, casting. It was a brand new show. They called um, top six couples in every single style, American Smooth, American Rhythm, International Latin, International Ballroom. And they said, hey, would you guys be willing to audition for the show? 
And at the time, I was actually partnered with uh, my professional ballroom partner, Latin. We competed in international Latin, was Jonathan Roberts. And they called us and we were like, this is such a cool thing. That would be so neat. Let's do it. Let's just give it a shot. We just didn't think much of it. We're just like, yeah. Now, a lot of the top dancers said, no, this is silly. We're not going to do this. Um, and funny enough, some of the dancers that ended up on Dancing with the Stars said, no, this is like doing pro -am. I'm never going to do pro -am. And this is like doing pro -am in front of everybody. And then guess what? Season two, they all started calling. Yeah. But yep, they called us. We didn't have to seek them out. So that was kind of a um, preparation meets luck type of thing. Okay, will you tell the kid privately? It's pri privately. Who's private privating me? Brianna is privating me. Will you tell the kids how you feel about being a Latin dancer and dancing smooth? They all think they are only good at Latin and not very good at smooth. Haven't found the similarities yet. Maybe you could share your experience. Yes, Brianna. You know I'm a decent smooth dancer. Thank you. Yeah. I actually found a lot of similarities in smooth and Latin um, from connection to dynamics to usage of an upper body to finishing lines to creating choreography. There's like so many similarities. In fact, um, if you're really good at Latin and you also study, study international ballroom, you are basically going to be by default a decent smooth dancer. And Latin right now is so it, it, smooth right now is inspired by so many different dance styles from Latin to contemporary to jazz to Broadway to commercial dancing. It's really kind of a fun, um, creative dance style. That's one of the youngest ones. So it's still it's still developing. It's still growing. So, yeah. All right. You're welcome, Eva. Do you guys have any more questions? We have like five minutes. Oh, yes, Jude. Yeah, um, so uh, like back to my first question. Um, how did you uh, self-agent yourself? Like, how did that work? Okay. Okay, let me give you an example, Jude. So let's say me, I have a dance studio and I just met you on this workshop. And then in the future, I'm going to see you hopefully one day, maybe when this is all over, even online, maybe at some dance competitions and dance performances. And I see you improving and I see you getting better and better and better. And you're just getting so good. And then you come up to me and say, hey, Anna, remember me? I'm Jude. I asked you all these questions. I'll be like, oh, my gosh, Jude, that's right. Wow, you're so grown up. You're getting so good. Hey, um, can I intern for you for your dance studio? Would you let me teach at your dance studio? And I'll think about it and go, well, you know what? Maybe this is not the right time. Or I'll go, you know what? I need a teacher. Thank goodness you asked. That's what I'm talking about. Networking. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay, good. You're welcome. All right. How are we doing, Robert? That was that was that was like a one minute answer. Anybody else? Oh hi, Brianna's baby. She's so so big. Okay. Anybody else? Questions going once? Otherwise, the teachers have the last question. Oh wow. You know, um, I will I will take the next one if no one else does. Because I've I've had a couple with with what Jude was talking about. I, I do notice, um, Anna, in your career, you've you know, you, I feel like you're always doing projects. Like you mentioned That's the reality. True. Show and that then 2020 happened, and I'm like doing nothing. <laughs> no, I thought you, I'm talking to you right now, and I'm very grateful that this is happening. So, but yeah, go ahead. But even now, I've seen this chitty chatty with with Anna yeah. on on Instagram or social media. Yeah. Even the the reality show that I was, you know, I was got to be a part of that that was a creative kind of thing, um, very elaborate. Um, I'm wondering how much of this these projects have been from your creativity, or is it, or is it all? Uh, do your managers? No, create? no. Actually, like for example, the last little adventure that I took myself on, 
uh, which is the Chitty Chatty with Anna on Instagram. So, by the way, the next one's coming on um, on Friday. I haven't they announced the person yet, but uh, she's an Australian. She's awesome. She's not a dancer, but she's married to one. Um, just plugging in myself, shameless, shameless. Um, so, guys, you you know, go back through. I I actually talked to some amazing dancers. A really, really good talk, if you can listen to, is with uh, Brittany Cherry. And she gives so many insiders, uh, in, inside points about the industry. And she's more of the commercial dancer. So if you want to like listen to that and get some of her wisdom. Um, but that just happened, Robert, honestly, because I was feeling, as we all, frustrated and caged. And I missed my friends and I missed communicating with another dancers um, and just talking and just being with people. Because, you no, know, we, we travel, I travel, I coach, I judge. So there's always something going on, some kind of exchange of energy, so to say. So this was for me just like, you know what? I'm just going to doing it and just do it, um, do it on, on, on public. Because a lot of friends in L.A. that I have, if they're going to do it on public, they'll do it. But otherwise, they're like, oh, yeah, later, whatever, da, 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 da. And then it's like never happens because it's like that definitely element exists. So some of the other stuff that I did, um, my husband, he's quite creative. He's an artist. He's a writer and actor and a, and a musician. And like in comparison to him, I feel like I'm not that creative. I mean, he's always doing stuff. And I sort of get inspired by that. Uh, we did a, a collab together where he was playing um, a guitar and I, I did a, like a freestyle dance. It wasn't really pre-planned. It wasn't too choreographed. So I'm a little bit messy, but I don't care because it was just all kind of on the rooftop, blah, blah, blah. But we did it because why not? Because we were, we were bored. And whenever you're bored, you go, how can I entertain myself? Because I can't binge watch Netflix anymore. I'm over it. What else can I do? And that's sort of how the creative creativity sometimes comes about. Is actually from boredom. So I don't know if that's very, <laughs> that, was, that wasn't a very good answer, but there you go. No, I, I love that. And I feel that from you. I feel like these things I see you doing are part of like your, your creative mind coming up with something and then just doing it. I see you posting things, you know, videos of yourself dancing or, you know, all these different projects. And I feel like you do have to be creative these days. And I feel like that's what keeps you going. Um, I think that the have to, we are running out of time, but I'm okay. I can still talk if you guys don't talk. My lesson is coming at 4.30. So give me, I could be with you for 10 more minutes, but I'll, I'll go on that. You don't have to anything. That's first of all, you choose to. If you want to, if you want to, if your choice is you want to go there, yeah, then there's a certain action steps you want to take. Um, my, this year for me, my choice, my plan was just to not grow mold on myself. You know what I mean? Just to do something, just to get my creative juices flowing, just to, just to do, just, just play, just have fun. Just something, do something that brings me joy, which is dancing, choreographing. I mean, when we're in the quarantine, I was teaching six group classes a week for the studio. Wasn't getting paid for it because all the money was going to the studio just to maintain it, just to something, right? But I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it because it keeps me moving. It keeps me going. It, I get to connect with people. My husband's like, what are you doing? You're not getting paid. And I was like, I don't care. I just want to do it. So sometimes when you're like, you, I just don't know why I'm going to do it, then that's the right thing. Just do it. You don't have to have all the answers. Yeah. I love it. Well, if, if nobody, does anybody have any, any last minute questions? Oh, Michael Watkins raised yes. it again. Oh, I get a question from Michael. Go ahead, ask me a question. I want to know who's going to unmute him. Oh, let me see. Oh, Am I Michael, unmuting you? Unmute yourself. Okay. Hi. Uh, hey. I want to thank you for this. Uh, it's been fantastic, Anna. 
Thank you and, so much. Uh, to piggyback on what you were just talking about and in the question and answer session in terms of being proactive, can you speak to the, to the students about how to think about or to best utilize their time with us while we're Zooming meeting with them? You want me to preach to them? Uh, Please. Oh uh, <laughs> my gosh, I'm like the worst. Uh, Brianna will tell you she took lessons with me and I'm like, well, if this is what you wanna do, that's what you do. I mean, here's the thing, guys, if you, if you made a conscious decision, if the decision was not made for you, and I don't think it was made for you because you are in the art school, okay? If you're in the art school, you're not in the math school, you're not a future engineer, you're not a future coding school, you know, whatever, future Bill Gates school, you are in the arts. That means you made that decision consciously. You said, I love it. I want to do it. This is fun. I'm doing it. And then you chose a dance ballroom dance, whatever dance, you chose that. You're like, this is kind of what I want to do. So what are the things, if for some reason your teachers are telling you, you're not really utilizing this time, you're not really going to your fullest, you're not going, you know, you're not, we don't see your full potential. Let's just call it that. They're all very polite. But, you know, in, in my country, they would say, you're lazy. You're not working hard enough. In this country, you're not supposed to say that. It's not appropriate. Okay. Now, nobody is really truly lazy. There's no, there's no lazy people. We're not born lazy. We are born curious and adventurous and creative and always wondering and always like, like if you look at little little babies, little kids, they're like, what is that? Oh, oh what's that? What's that? You know why that they're that way? Because A, they don't have any fears. They just don't, they're not capable of fears yet. Their brain isn't developed yet to have that emotion. They don't have fears. First of all. Second of all, they don't have enough life experience, aka baggage, to stop them. So they'll, they take everything with open eyes. They're like, everything is awesome. Yeah. So then, if you go back to this is how you truly are. This is how we all are. Adults, teenagers, kids, we all have the sense of wonder and curiosity in, the, in us and sense of creativity. We were made that way. That's in us. Otherwise, we wouldn't survive a species. Trial and error. It's a constant trial and error. We have to be that way. Then ask yourself, well, why aren't I? Why am I lazy? Why? What is it? Am I tired? Am I not taking care of myself? Am I not sleeping enough? Um, am I stressing out about certain things? Am I putting too much pressure on yourself, on myself? And because I put too much pressure on myself, I'm the perfectionist mind. I feel like, well, if it's not perfect, then I would rather not do that. Trust me, I've been that road. It's not a very productive road. It's always better just to do something than to do it perfect. Just do something and expect yourself to fail. Mess up as much as you can because through messing up, you're also learning. Yeah? So if now, if this is like, you're, you're like, oh, it's just, I just don't want to do it. I would rather go code. I would rather go become a bookkeeper than do that. Then be honest with yourself and say, you know what? Not for me. I did it just because all my friends did it. I did it to please my mom or to please my dad or to whatever it is that you did it for, uh, fame, celebrity, I don't know. Then, then don't do it. Yeah? I don't know, Michael, if that was a really good answer. But that oh, was- Oh, it was very good. Thank that you. That was the honest you. one for me. Thank I you. Thought it, I thought it was great, Anna, because it's it, you're being honest with with us with with the kids and i yeah. do feel like that's what we wanted that's why we wanted everybody to be able to ask whatever they want 
and then you to be able to answer it however you want and you have. You've been very honest with us. And I think this has been a very inspiring session. It's been fascinating for me. I hope it's been just as, as fascinating for everyone, for all the students. And I so appreciate you being here with us today, Anna. Oh, you're so welcome. It was my pleasure. Thanks, guys. I'm going to applaud you for it. Great questions, wonderful work, and hopefully not the last one, and just go out there and mess up. <laughs> <laughs> go out there and make something beautiful out of a mess. There you go. Okay. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Okay, for guys. Bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>